she is. This audio is attached to 4586664355, a number ominously placed on a few billboards with no further context. If one were to Google this number, they'd find it is a part of many unsettling pieces of advertising for the upcoming Nicolas Cage film, Long Legs. This July release has had some of the most terrifying and mysterious marketing I have ever seen for a movie, allowing anyone who dares to become a detective and dive into the hellish murders that seem to be present. I decided to pull out my magnifying glass, and today alongside my girlfriend Juliet, I believe we have cracked exactly what this movie is about and the mystery behind these murders. Even if you already have seen the movie, I would highly suggest you watching this video as you will probably find a lot of things you hadn't noticed previously, as well as some deeper meanings meanings that might not have been discussed in the movie that were present elsewhere. To explain what exactly is going on, we're going to need to discuss the trailers, the teasers, ciphers, and an ongoing ARG. And it all started with one simple post released on January 5th, 2024. A video uploaded to Neon titled, Every Year There Is Another. This ominously titled video opens with the voice of a disgruntled father on the phone with the police. It's my daughter. Convinced that what seems to be his daughter isn't actually his daughter. It's not my daughter. With a birthday banner behind this family in the photo. At the end, we see a photo of their bodies followed by a code of some type. Not only that, but blink and you'll miss that small flashes of those same symbols at the end play throughout the entire trailer. At the time of release, we had no idea what the hell was going on with this video. We could gather that it was a movie teaser since it was coming from the Neon official channel, but nothing else was decipherable. Theories began to buzz, and people eagerly awaited for more hints of what this could be. However, we have the benefit of hindsight, and that code at the end of the teaser was figured out by Jonah Cage on Reddit. I'd like to let Juliet take over for this part. Introduce yourselves for those that don't know you. Hi, my name is Juliet, and I love internet ARGs. I've participated in several, such as the ARG for the Batman, this house has people in it, which is by Adult Swim, Alan Resnick, really good, and the very, I wouldn't say very famous, but the season 3 Stranger Things ARG with Baskin Robbins. That was really fun. I love puzzles and escape rooms, and I'm really excited for Long Legs because I'm actually a pretty big Nicolas Cage fan. I think he's really silly and funny, but to see him in a more serious role is going to be really exciting. And it's because of her history that she knows ciphers similar to this like the back of her hand. What do you think this means? The translation means long legs. It's a fully custom substitution cipher using symbols similar to wingdings, which are familiar to Undertale fans because that was also used in the very short-lived Gaster ARG. Substitution ciphers are basically the ciphers you made as a kid in like elementary school with all those stupid symbols. They stand for letters and you have a full alphabet to remember which is which. Another famous case of a substitution cipher is with the Zodiac Killer. He used a lot. Um, he was really bad about it though he can't even fucking spell that's long legs main cipher but he also pulls up a veganary cipher later on the symbols at the end being deciphered told us pretty much an entire month before the film what the title was but the symbols popped up intermittently throughout the trailer appear to make the word esglo which isn't really a word but the reason behind them being there was probably to assist in the discovery of the substitution cipher and like the creation of the alphabet because whenever you have multiple letters that are repeated like you would repeat double e's double s's double o's it's very easy to pick up on a pattern like that and it helps you figure out what the possible words could be and kind of reverse engineer an alphabet from that Thank you, Juliet. The important parts you need to take away from this teaser are the following. The crimes relate to or take place around a girl's ninth birthday. The dad is either hallucinating or something really is wrong with his daughter. This killer enjoys trying to make a fool out of detectives through ciphers, much like the Zodiac Killer. Every year, there is another murder. All of these will be very important for discussion later on, so be sure to keep them in mind. For now, I would like to discuss every piece of evidence and media released in chronological order so that it can make the most sense to a viewer. The next teaser was released a week later on January 12th, 2024. 
Remember to Say Your Prayers is the first trailer that clues us in on very religious themes prevalent in Long Legs, as well as it being a movie about an active investigation as FBI agents are seen removing a floorboard with a cross stuck to it. Underneath is a box, but before we can see its contents, the screen cuts to a black cloth hiding something as its eyes begin to glow red. The trailer is narrated by someone asking us if we still say our prayers and that our prayers protect us from the devil. Are you still saying your prayers? Our prayers protect us from the devil. Throughout the teaser, we see one second frames of crime scene photos, and the trailer ends with yet another code to decipher. While browsing the horror subreddit, we found an image of this shot brighten up. I can't remember the user that posted this, I'm sorry, but here is the image. Pretty freaky, right? It's clearly humanoid in nature, but not quite human. Uh, Juliet, what do we think the cipher is? The cipher again appears to be a substitution, this time reading Hail Satan. Well, <laughs> isn't that lovely? So from this teaser, we can gather that there is something demonic involved in these crime scenes from the thing hiding underneath this cloak and the cipher at the end. Of course, there is a lot of context missing in this one since it's only like 30 seconds long. So for now, we'll have to put a pen to going very in depth on it. In the meantime, let's talk about the next teaser released once again a week later on January 19th, 2024. We've Been Waiting For Her opens with the shot of a house, a cross in center frame. This cross seems to be the same one laying on the floorboards the detectives were opening earlier. This clues us in that the scene is before the crime takes place. We see a man who we later find out to be a father as he welcomes a priest into their home. The priest looks directly at the camera. He appears to come over to talk to the camera, but then shies away in fear. Not even moments later, he is charged with an axe by the father. We then cut to who we later find as our main character, Lee Harker, played by Micah Monroe, as she analyzes a board full of Longlegs ciphers and crimes. Over her, you can hear Longlegs gasp and say gleefully, <laughs> Throughout the trailer, there is again one frame details. This time they appear to be more ciphers, and of course the teaser ends with a final cipher. This trailer holds very interesting pieces of information for the audience. One of which is the seeming connection between Lee Harker and Longlegs that only seems to be getting more present in the advertising for this movie. How do these two connect, you may ask? Well, we hope to explain that to you later. One thing that was pointed out by user MaterialCut2522 on Reddit, which is quite interesting, is that these papers on the wall in front of her seem to form an eye with Harker at the center. The pupil, a part of the eye, means little doll in Latin. Dolls being something we will come to find out is very important to Longlegs and his actions. This eye appears to be peering into her, lured in by the temptation of trying to decode these messages. We find out later on that, quote, ever since she was a little girl, she wanted to catch a killer. This could be her chance. As we find out later on, she does dive into the occult to understand what is going on. This is what the teaser could mean by we've been waiting for her and why Longlegs is excited to see her. Again though, a lot of the contents of this teaser are better explained a little later on, but we can definitely figure out the ciphers for you. The flashing symbols throughout the trailer say stood upon the sand of the sea, and the symbols at the end say July. This is pretty cool because it hints at the future release month of the film. On her board, some of these ciphers mean some very interesting things. The one in red that is by her face is especially intriguing because it's the introduction of a visionaire cipher and can be deciphered by using the keyword long legs. It reads the following, quote, I am locked in a little meter bow with a picture of shepherds posted onto the central papal. Between carvings, the box stands on curved legs. You may be quick to point out, wait, there are a few typos in here, right? Which, yeah, you would be correct, there are. As we mentioned briefly, Longlegs seems to be very based on the Zodiac Killer, and he was known for either being a bad speller or forgetting his own key because there were always a ton of mistakes when his codes were deciphered. It's a big reason some of his ciphers took so long, like take Z340, which was solved in 2020. It has a multitude of typos. Thanks to OP Darton on Reddit, we were able to find that the meter bow is likely supposed to be Cedar Box, which is a part of the poem Satan Says by Sharon Olds, released in 1979. Upon checking to see if this were true, it's very easy to recognize quickly that this is what Longlegs was intending, as it reads, I am locked in a little cedar box with a picture of shepherds pasted onto the central 
little panel between carvings. The box stands on curved legs. The poem consists of a young girl, probably a child, trapped in a box underground, where the only way out is if she insults every aspect of her life that she cares about to please Satan. After she does so, instead of letting her free, Satan takes her soul and leaves her body in the box. Does this sound familiar? We see something very, very similar to this with Remember to Say Your Prayers, as something or someone is clearly buried under the floorboards of a barn. Upon revisiting the trailer, what is the box in the floorboards but a cedar box? The symbols that play throughout the teaser making stood upon the sand of the sea are also really interesting. This is a line that directly references Revelations 13.1 from the Book of Revelations in the New Testament, which states, quote, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Revelations is a part of the Bible that discusses the end times, or rather simply, the apocalypse. What this specific excerpt is referring to, according to BibleRef.com, is that John is seeing the first beast that most would know as the Antichrist, which is typically perceived to be, quote, political and social leader serving the interests of Satan during the trials of tribulations. Although we know that the servant in our story is no political or social leader, they are simply a serial killer. Right? Regardless of what Longleg's exact purpose is, coupled with the last ciphers Hail Satan, we can infer that whoever they are, they are a deep follower of Satanism. The description, seven heads and ten horns, is the biblical description of Satan as a dragon. This teaser suggests that Longlegs and someone else, hence we, have been waiting for Harker to arrive on the scene. This means she probably served some greater purpose in Longlegs' plan, especially considering how excited he is about her being a part of it all now. The title of the next teaser released on February 2nd, 2024 is You've Got the Teeth of the Hydra Upon You. Before we get into the contents of this trailer, I'd like to point out something that the horror community has been gradually realizing about this film. Longlegs seems to really like the English rock band T-Rex. Their songs are referenced many times throughout this advertising campaign, which is interesting because they are known for dabbling in paganism with some of their songs, having references to Beltane, witches, and many more. The title of this teaser is a reference to their song, Bang a Gong, or Get It On. This is a little peculiar to reference as the meaning of the song seems to be about lovers or sex, whilst Longlegs appears to not be in a relationship or sexually engaged with anyone. I'm not sure the exact meaning of how this could correlate, but maybe it's not meant to and he just enjoys their music. You know, bops will be bops, even if you are a serial killer. The other meaning for this teaser is likely of course relating to Revelations, by you've got the teeth of the Hydra upon you, probably referring to the Antichrist coming after you. Regardless, the teaser is probably the most revealing of them so far. Instead of being a mere 30 seconds, it's a minute and 30. Some of these teasers and trailers tend to repeat scenes, so we're not going to mention ones that have already appeared unless they have new meaning or more context. It opens with Lee Harker looking at her board once again, then looking off to the right. We then cut to a girl looking at a car outside of her bedroom window. I believe this detail is intentional because this girl doesn't appear to be involved in any of the crimes we see in the teasers at all. Checking the the cast on Letterboxd and IMDb reveals that this actress is Lauren Akala, credited for playing young Lee Harker. This is our agent as a child. What this possibly means, we will discuss later. We then cut back to the present, where Harker is about to open a book titled A Guide to the Nine Circles of Hell. On her desk next to it is a book that appears to be titled The Dark Lord's Hand. This is another interesting thing. This caught my attention because if you take a look at her board with the ciphers from Longlegs, there appears to be a diagram of what many believe the Nine Circles of Hell would look like. Harker seems to be dipping her toes into the occult to understand exactly what Longlegs wants. After we once again see the cross on the floorboards, this time confirming Harker was one of the two detectives there, we see them entering the space and it appears to be a barn of some kind, but we cannot confirm for sure at this point what this space is. We then cut to Harker, flips to the page of an upside down triangle in a circle, and she herself is drawing that triangle on a paper. This paper is important because what Lee is using to connect the dots is the dates and the murders that have taken place. And we know this in hindsight because of the birthdaymurders.net. This is a website that has come about as of June 14th from the Long Glegs Instagram, and it houses many things. But one of those is the details about all of these crimes. 
Not just little details though. We get dates, the year, the location, the names of the victims, and a myriad of photos from each scene. We'll talk more about this later on since I'm trying to have things in chronological order and talking about the birthday murders too much here can throw things a little out of whack. For now, let's discuss why this is important. Longlegs murders fall on a series of dates that form an upside down triangle, which has a multitude of meanings. One being in spiritualism to embody motherhood or womanhood, essentially divine feminine energy. In Buddhism, it is the symbol for moving from ignorance to enlightenment, and for Christianity, an upright triangle symbolizes the Holy Trinity, you know, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Turning to upside down suggests, similar to an upside down cross, that this is no longer the Holy Trinity. Another meaning is that this appears to be a much simpler version of what the nine levels of hell descend into according to Dante's Inferno, an upside down triangle. Another possible meaning is something I found called the Hell Triangle, a triangle that seems to seek explanation for the final punishment of Christians. I'm not sure if it holds much weight for this story, however, as it doesn't seem to have many people backing it, but it is still something I wanted to call attention to. One thing that is strange is the Birthday Murders website lists crimes that are not even considered on this piece of paper drawn by Lee Harker. These take place in March, April, May, and June. What's interesting to note about these murders is unlike the ones that do contribute to forming the triangle, the murders during these months were more brutal and hosted far more satanic imagery than the others. The reason Longlegs is likely marking out to build these triangles through the murders is to insult God and Jesus, as this is typically what demonic forces do. He could also be building invocations for the nine circles of hell to bring about the end times mentioned in Revelations. We then cut to a desk where we learn a lot about long legs very quickly. The first is we see a hand holding what appears to be a golden ball. While I'm not sure the exact meaning of this, I was able to find that golden balls typically suggest the vessel for a soul by spiritualists, although I can't confirm anything concrete about this. I feel this ball holds importance though, as this is the first thing we actually see about long legs. The next shot is him putting together a doll of some kind. And the scene is very important. The first thing is that his workspace is in the basement, and that's important because he refers to himself as the man downstairs. The man downstairs could be literal or metaphorical, since he works in his basement. If we take a look to his left, which is our right, we can see the upside down triangle that Harker was drawing on her desk. To his right, we can see what appears to be the Staff of Hermes, or as some of you may know it as, the Caduceus. It's typically used as a symbol for medicine here in the States, but in this case it seems to be missing the staff that the snakes usually surround, and a skull is in its place. What this suggests, I'm not exactly sure. The only thing that was able to be found was thanks to my friend Ryan, and it was on Facebook posts that claims that they are intertwined twin Kundalini serpents, meaning it's the relationship between two opposites, the sun and the moon. This could be in relation to the connections between Harker and Longlegs, as one is a murderer and one is an FBI agent, especially since later on we seem to find out that Longlegs is well aware who Harker is. While this connection felt solid, I really wasn't satisfied with it, so I decided to keep looking, and I kept looking, and then I found some connections in Mesopotamian mythos. The Caduceus has an entirely different meaning to them, as it's a symbol of snake worship. This symbolizes renewal, as snakes were believed to be able to infinitely shed their skin, living forever. A recovered artifact actually is absolutely the symbol on his wall. This makes sense because we find out he's been active for anywhere from 20 to 30 years, and one of the crime scenes he is cited as an elderly woman, but that was decades ago. He appears to be the same age now, which means he probably hasn't aged at all. The symbol underneath the stake image, I couldn't make out at all. I'm sorry guys. For now, we at least know he might worship snakes. He's definitely deep into the hole with the occult, and he enjoys making dolls. The next shot is of Longlegs, wandering through a hardware store to buy items for his doll creations, and the cashier is a girl. This scene initially doesn't seem important, but it actually really is. If you take a look at her appearance and her blue eyes, this is going to be important. This scene here is not meant to just be filler. We come back to Harker as she finishes drawing her triangle, and then looks behind her as if something is watching her. And the following shot is in fact something watching her from afar, but we aren't sure what, although we do find out later. 
The next shot is of a woman kneeling and staring at the camera, then taking an axe to the back. This shot should look familiar because it's the same shot from the beginning of We've Been Waiting For Her, where the priest was going to talk to the same thing this mother appears to speak to, and is killed by the father using the same weapon. The shot is followed by Harker having a physical reaction to it while holding a photo, seeming to see and feel what happened to her. This suggests that, for reasons we will discuss later, Harker develops a psychic connection to the mothers of these murders. Longlegs is then shown wandering through the house, I believe to be the same one we see the entity that had the black cloak in, and I assume this is him again outside in the middle of the woods surrounded by fog. We then see him putting the same black cloak the entity was wearing and remember to say your prayers on something. Except this time, it appears to be over a girl, or is it? I believe that this isn't an actual girl, but one of the dolls he makes, and it's possible he makes doll replicas of the girls who get murdered. Why, you may ask, as birthday presents. It is the birthday murders, after all. These families likely take these dolls in, assuming that they are gifts of some kind. But little do they know, they are actually far more sinister. It seems as if a ritual has just taken place in this room given the ominously lit candles. We then cut to what seems to be Long Lakes captured in a questioning cell by Harker, but he slams his head on the desk. This is incredibly interesting, because it suggests that either Longlegs let himself be caught and then kills himself, or that this shot isn't real and takes place somewhere else. Maybe in someone's mind? We see blood bubbling up, but I'm not sure at this point of the trailers what its exact meaning is. And then we see what seems to be Harker outside her house, and Longlegs is inside of it? Although I've got no way to prove it, these woods feel to be the same woods that Longlegs was seen sitting outside in. I also don't believe him to actually be at her house, as she seems to be seeing things like she does when she sees the death of that mother earlier. The next shot is Longlegs, however it is of him upside down. I believe this to be Longlegs in the Nine Circles of Hell, which may sound insane to some of you, but let me explain. In other media I've consumed that reference or take place in the Nine Circles of Hell, say As Above So Below for example, which spoilers for this movie by the way if you don't want to hear about this, skip to here, the characters are seen to come out of a mirror world. What I mean by that is that they are pushing on a grate below them as hard as they can, only for them to push through it and come right side up back to the real world. The Nine Circles of Hell seem to be depicted as our world, just upside down. So with all the connections to the circles already here in this film, this scene here being representative of it makes sense to me. Skipping some scenes we have already witnessed, we are then met with Harker driving a car and screaming, which cuts immediately to who other than Longlegs himself. We can confirm this is him because he is wearing the same exact outfit he was seen wearing at the hardware store. The scene is very intriguing because it once again hints at their connections with one another, with them both feeling each other's pains or emotions. Another reason it's interesting is because they are driving the same exact car, you can tell by the seats and the keychain at the front. I'm not sure if this suggests that her presumably psychic connections allow her to understand long legs too, but we're gonna dive into the possible meanings of this later. The next few scenes in the teaser play at extremely quick speeds. We see what appears to be a nun holding a rifle, having just killed someone in the front seat of the vehicle. Then we see Harker moving through her house with a pistol, which means it's possible that long legs did break into her house. The next clip is an FBI armored vehicle going out of control. The next clip is probably the most important of these quick clips, being the father we saw earlier having slayed what we can assume were his cows. The reason this is important is because it does in fact show that the fathers are the ones who become unstable, and it shows that he does indeed have a farm, meaning that where this cedar box was buried earlier is probably a barn house. The next clip is also important, as it shows Longlegs with his hands over his head. Why is it important? Well, not only does he seem to work with dolls, but in interviews he has cited himself as like a possessed Geppetto. I'm sure that name rings a bell to many, and it should since Geppetto is the man who made Pinocchio. This pose he's striking, although a little extravagant, heavily resembles a person holding the cross brace for a marionette or a person controlling strings. The next shot is the nun again, putting bloodied hands up to her face. We see her face for a split second, and with that I was able to identify this as Alicia Witt. Who is this, you may ask? Well, she's credited as playing Lee Harker's mom. Her mom being very religious makes a lot of sense, as we learn later on that Lee is afraid to pray. The only question is then, what's going on here? The last shot we saw of her is shooting someone in the front seat of a car, so does that suggest she killed someone? Who is she killing? 
Also, her hands are really bloody, like absurdly so, and they weren't before. It looks as if she had either killed more people or gouged her hands into someone's body, but I'm not sure. Another thing that's interesting to note is that if she is in fact a nun, that means Lee is adopted since nuns do not marry or have children. There's also no Mr. Harker and the credited actors anywhere further proving this point. We see young Lee again as she slowly closes her door and Longlegs appears to be tying someone up in the next shot. But the thing is, this isn't the house from the beginning of the movie. This is definitely a different one. This person has a rag of some type in their mouth too. Is this possibly Harker's house? And is this Harker's mom? Did she close the door while watching him do this to her? The shot holds many mysteries around it at this point in the marketing. The last shot of the trailer is the cipher we see in There is Another Every Year turn into long legs. I believe this is the first time we see the code actually deciphered, and it's followed by another cipher being decoded to coming soon. I believe this gave the community many of the words it needed to start decoding, and boy did they start going hog wild. You've Got the Teeth of the Hydra is easily the most important piece of Longlegs lore we had gotten at this point in time, as without it we wouldn't have been able to understand the ciphers, we wouldn't know exactly what it is Longlegs does, and it draws deep connections between Satanism and Longlegs. He seems extremely knowledgeable on all things relating to Satan, from poems to bands to religious texts, and he seems to be inexplicably tied to Harker. Just a few days before this Hydra trailer would drop, Neon's official Instagram account released the series of images all relating to the movie. The first is a lady who is trying to cut her stomach open with a knife of some kind, and while she appears to be in pain, it's not making an incision of any kind. The caption reads, quote, Miss Camera, Mother, Father, Priest, Axe, 1975. It was a good day for a good girl to be at school. From that description and the photo, we can decipher that Miss Camera is the wife of the guy who killed the priest and later her with an axe. The thing that's odd about this caption in hindsight is that 1974 was the last year Longlegs was thought to be active until 1987, a full 13 year break. We know this thanks to the Birthday Murders website, so not only is this a year Longlegs wasn't thought to be active, but it's a family not even thought to have been connected to the Birthday Murders at all. But I do believe there's a reason for it. Mother, father, priest, axe. Those are the three people we know who died and the weapon they died to. It was a good day for a good girl to be at school. The daughter of this family wasn't home at the time of the murders, which suggests to our knowledge that she's the first survivor. This is why it's not listed as a crime committed by Longlegs, as it doesn't match up with his other crimes. The girl lived. The only question then is why did this daughter live for the camera family? What purpose was it for? The next photo is of Harker's mother with her face on the hood of a car. The caption reads, door to door, there she goes. When she stops, nobody knows, except for him. He knows. It's not unusual for sisters to go around to houses either to get donations for their churches or to bring in new members. Take Jehovah's Witnesses as a popular example. I believe this teaser is trying to draw a connection between Longlegs and Harker's mother since he's the only he we would know. Another thing to note is that this is after she's just killed the person in the red car since this image is of her resting on the other vehicle that was in the driveway. What else this could mean though, I'm not sure. There are still so many mysteries surrounding Harker's mom. The next photo is one we should recognize, as it's the photo at the end of every year there is another. The caption reads, quote, The Horn family. Former family of four. Mother got it worst. Father said she needed it most. No signs of forced entry. November 14th, 1992. The Horn family is listed on the Birthday Murders website at this date, so we know this post to be accurate to them. The mother received it the worst, and if we take a look at the entry we can figure out why. Her name was Teresa, the name of a former saint, and she had heavy ties to a local church. Two big connections to Christianity. We will discuss more about this crime later though. No signs of forced entry means that this family let long legs into their house somehow, whether it was possibly the doll or the father. The next photo is of Harker as a child in front of a big white house. The caption reads, quote, the birthday girl. Eight years old, police report, January 13th, 1974. So lucky to celebrate. This caption in hindsight raises a few questions. One being the day the police report happened. January 13th, 1974 is not a day listed on the birthday murders. And from every year there is another, we can gather Longlegs commits one murder per year. 
We know for a fact that his crime committed in 1974 was the Weir family, so it can't be relevant to Harker. Not only this, this caption suggests Harker to be 8 years old, meaning she is too young to fit into the typical long legs criteria for killing as the youngest is always nine. Therefore, she cannot be a part of the birthday murders in any way. So what does this mean? The only way him coming here makes sense is if her ninth birthday is in a few days. But the question then becomes, upon visiting her, what made him decide not to go through with his plan? This White House scene will appear many times in the advertising, so we will surely discuss the scene many more times. After this, of course, You've Got the Teeth of the Hydra Upon You was released. But interestingly enough, this is the last piece of Longlegs Media for two months. The next release would be to their Instagram on April 17th. Neon's official account released two images, one called Dirty, part one, and the other called Sweet, part one. Sweet would show Harker looking directly at Longlegs in a questioning room, and Dirty would show Longlegs looking directly at Harker. This, of course, confirms the FBI does capture Longlegs, as the Hydra trailer suggests. Each one of these posts would have a cipher at the top. For Lee, it says, Hell awaits, possibly meaning that Longlegs is going to be sentenced to hell, whether that be prison or something else, like the Nine Circles. Longlegs, is, though, is really interesting because it says, Behold Hanbi. Hanvi may ring a bell to some, but I assume not to many, so let me explain. In Mesopotamian mythology, Hanbi is an Udug, the lord of all evil and the father of Pazuzu. An Udug is a class of demons that are thought to be malicious, but in certain circumstances could actually help humans. Pazuzu is a name I'm sure many will recognize, as he is most famously depicted possessing Regan McNeil in the Exorcist franchise. Establishing Hanbi's existence with Longlace is absolutely no coincidence either, but more on that later. At the same time as these images were released, videos titled Part 2 for both Dirty and Sweet were released to YouTube and are about 50 seconds in length each. Both seem to take place from their respective perspectives. Let's talk about Sweet Part 2. Sweet opens with Lee asking the audience if we still say our prayers. Do you still say your prayers? which is the same line from Remember to Say Your Prayers. Only this time the voice isn't robotic. She follows up later by saying, I never said my prayers, never once. They scared me. We then see a shot of her mom and a shot of the detectives going to a white barn. Here is our proof that all this time, the cedar box they're digging up is in fact in a barn, and because of the trailers, we can assume it belongs to the camera family. Then we see a shot of Mrs. Camera reaching out to her husband for help, and then we get the most important shot of the entire teaser, young Harker with a dark horned figure behind her. This is unmistakable concrete proof that Harker has some connection to the occult. Honestly, it even hints that she has an entity of some kind attached to her. This isn't the last time we see this dark horned figure either as he appears multiple times in marketing, and every time it's with Harker. She is hiding something dark and sinister in her. We know that she's likely adopted since her mother never married to have her, and this figure is definitely what ties her to long legs. The next shot is of Harker in her office watching a film of some kind, but we don't really know what it is. After this, we move to Mrs. Camera in the same attire she was in the Instagram post where she tried to kill herself. Here we see her taking that same knife and stabbing a doll as hard as she can. This is a human, life-sized doll. Where do we think she got it from? Obviously, the only answer for this is long legs. So we can deduce that long legs doesn't just have a weird hobby for making dolls, he somehow also gets them to the households of these families. The next shot is of Harker screaming in Longlegs' car again. I'm beginning to think now it's not her feeling what Longlegs does, but it's her finding out something about herself she wishes she didn't know. There is one thing I've mentioned in the trailers but not really talked upon, and that is there have been scenes of blood bubbling up and boiling. While I haven't deciphered its exact meaning yet, I have some ideas. We then are continuing the shot from a previous trailer, the one where Harker was looking outside at Longlegs' car. Here she is going to the car. We aren't sure why she's doing it at this point in time or why he is at her house. The next shot is again, Longlegs tying someone up. I'm bringing it up once more because this trailer again seems to be from Harker's point of view. I believe this confirms this is Harker's mom and that Longlegs is in her house. The way the lighting in makes me feel it takes place before or not long after the scene where that horn figure shows up. The last shot of this trailer is Harker in the bathroom staring at herself in the mirror, almost as if she can't trust herself. The one thing that's especially eerie about this moment is that she doesn't blink. 
Throughout Sweet, a poem is displayed that reads, So close to the crimson and clover, all gone now to the edge, where the black begins, the long forked tongue hisses. There are some interesting things to this poem. The Crimson and Clover is a song by Tommy James and the Shondells, meaning this could be another song reference from Longlegs. The really intriguing part is the year this song was released was 1968, which is the same year the Clover family died according to the birthday murders. Not to mention that the three-leafed clover is a symbol for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Christianity. I'm not sure the meaning of all gone now to the edge. However, where the black begins, the long forked tongue hisses definitely sounds like a reference to something demonic, whether it be Hanbi or our horned friend. There's a lot of imagery of snakes in later trailers as well, so maybe that? Sweet ends with Daughter of the Seventh She, which also seems to be extremely important. Seventh Son of a Seventh Son is a folklore myth that says the seventh child in a row to be born a boy is born with God-given powers, whether it's being psychic or possessing the abilities to heal according to England and Ireland, having the ability to enchant and talk to snakes according to Italy, or whether you're cursed to be a werewolf according to Latin America, this child is special. There's also mentions of the seventh daughter of the seventh daughter, although they appear to be a bit more minor. They say that this child is born with healing abilities and clairvoyance. Another possible explanation for Daughter of the Seventh She needs us to once again look at Mesopotamian mythology. Lamash II is a demon or malevolent goddess known to have seven names and was described as seven witches. This definition would make her the seventh she, and if we are to interpret this trailer to come from Harker's perspective, this would make her in some form the Daughter of Lamash II. If we wanted to dig a little deeper, Lamash II is typically depicted being the wife of Pazuzu, whose father is already connected to the story. I feel like there is too much overlap here to simply look the other way, especially considering there appears to be a demonic presence already surrounding Harker. Another possible explanation for Daughter of the Seventh She is, well, in 1974, the Weir family was attacked by Longlegs. Coincidentally, this was the seventh family. If we are to take the post from their Instagram about the police report in 1974 relating to Harker and involving Longlegs, this means potentially she was almost the seventh victim, making her the daughter of the seventh she. The last thing I'll say about this teaser for now is that the description says ever since she was a little girl, she wanted to catch a killer. While this doesn't bring a lot to the table, it at the bare minimum tells us why she wanted to become an FBI agent. This is as far as we can talk about Harker here though, so let's talk about Longlegs and Dirty Part 2. <laughs> Dirty opens with Longlegs chuckling to himself, seemingly staring out a window. As a young girl stops by, he stops laughing and watches her as she looks around confused. This girl at this point in time has yet to be seen in the trailers at all. The next shot is a snake coiled up, and from the angle it looks as if it's descending towards us. After this we get a better look at this desk where he makes dolls. While we cannot decipher a ton from this shot, two things stand out to me. One is the golden ball in the palm of the hand again. What could this mean? Does it even hold any significance? The other thing that is important is to the right of the doll's head we can see a paper similar to the one that Harker was marking out. By this I mean it's a list of every month, with each month having a date spread out and some are circled. This confirms Harker's suspicions that Longlegs is meticulously planning out these murders to form triangles, as we can clearly see the outline of what appears to be a triangle. However, the dates are hard to make out, so it's hard to tell if the ones that we know of are accurate. The next shot to play out is at the FBI, where all the agents are watching a video Longlegs seems to have taken. He's clearly laughing, probably mocking them all. However, this isn't what really stood out to me. What did is Harker standing off to the side, almost hiding from everyone else. She clearly feels a bit disconnected from everyone, but it could be because she's the only woman here in uniform. The next shot is blurred vision of long legs in front of a house. From the trailers we've seen, we can connect that this house is Harker's, as it's the only one we've seen while it's snowing, and this front yard perfectly matches up with the one outside of her bedroom window. While this shot plays, this is the first time of many we hear Longlegs say cuckoo. Cuckoo might just seem like a throwaway word, but its usage is likely very intentional. A cuckoo bird is honestly a bit of an evil bird, known for acting kind of like a parasite. What they do is remove eggs from a nest and replace those eggs with their own, tricking the host of the nest into feeding their offspring and raising it as their own. 
This should ring two bells for those of you watching. The first being our very first teaser, Every Year There Is Another, as in that teaser, the father claims to 911 that that's not my daughter. This implies that Longlegs is taking something of his own, in this case I'm going to assume a doll, and putting it in these households. The other thing that came to my mind is none other than Harker, because we are still going to assume that she is adopted. She harbors some type of entity connected to her, and he says this line for the first time in front of Harker's house. The next is from Harker's perspective again, where she's reading one of his letters. This letter says, Tell them where you got this, how it came into. I'll cut off her hanging milk tits and bleed your mommy dead. This letter is obviously extremely targeted towards women, specifically mothers, and again seems to be related to Lamatsu. One of the many malevolent acts Lamatsu was known for is harming mothers or expecting moms. It could also be a message to her about her and her mom, with tell them where you got this, how it came into, referring to the horned entity around her, and bleed your mommy dead referring to her mom. Although it's very possible it just refers to the crimes in general as most of the mothers that die in the birthday murders end up dying from blood loss. What plays after this I believe to be very important, as it is a lady loading a rifle, the same lady that Longlegs was holding down earlier and tying up, which means this is more than likely Harker's mom. Since she's loading up a rifle, I believe this is her trying to tell us that Harker's mom was planning to kill her after realizing something wasn't right with her, and then Longlegs stepped in to try and stop her. Either this, or Longlegs has infiltrated their house and Harker is trying to protect them from him. The next few clips are very quick, and I don't see them as too important. The one is of a cat hissing. I'm not sure about this cat, but maybe it's just another nod to something demonic going on, as cats are seen in media to normally be able to sense ghostly presence. One of these shots is also really weird, because it looks like the blood scene again, but this time it's like something is coming out of it, almost like an aura of some kind. The next shot is Harker looking out a window and gasping, and the final shot is long legs gasping, saying, Oh, there she is. <laughs> this time, instead of Harker's board, we see one of his finished dolls sitting in front of a mirror. The same doll is the one that Miss Camera stabbed in Sweet Part 2, meaning that this doll does find its way into that household. The trailer has yet another poem, and it reads, Listen loud, the serpents see the darkness slithering. Tell me what good is that body if not hiding red shiny parts. This poem could have a myriad of meanings. We of course have connections again to snakes, with snakes in terms of the Bible being representative for temptation and evil. The devil is also referred to as an ancient serpent because of the Garden of Eden. Since there are of course connections to Mesopotamia with Lamash 2 and Hambi, I decided to look for the meaning of snakes there outside of the Caduceus and found Ning Ish Zida. In Mesopotamian mythology, he typically appears in the underworld and is always associated with snakes. Believe it or not, the same Caduceus on Langleg's work desk is a symbol belonging to him in their mythology. The one thing about his mythos that really interests me is that he was believed to spend part of the year in the underworld, something I believe could fit Longlegs. With all the mentions regarding the nine circles of hell with him, it's very possible that between his crimes he resides in something similar to that. I know this kind of suggests him to be otherworldly, but it makes sense to me. Again, in all of the crimes we see in him for the marketing, he has gray and frizzy hair, which you know is something old people typically have. However, even though his crimes take place over near the span of like 30 years, he doesn't seem to age a single day, so part of me doubts he really is entirely human. Another thing is the body holding shiny red parts. This is likely referring to organs. What this means, I think we can explain later. The trailer ends with the man downstairs, which is what we talked about earlier. He works in the basement, downstairs could be either hell or the nine circles of hell, and it's very likely he's referring to himself as the devil. The description of this video reads, first, it was too many voices. They couldn't be understood, but then they started to settle. I feel like this suggests that at one point, Longlegs was definitely a normal human guy. However, something happened to possess him, and eventually his internal voice and this other voice began to synchronize and understand one another. After all, he is a possessed Geppetto. Sweet and dirty don't appear to reveal much on the surface, but upon just a little digging, we can learn so much about the two of these people. Each piece of information is drawing us closer and closer to the true meaning of this movie. After Sweet and Dirty, things would once again go quiet for about a month until May 20th, 2024. 
out of seemingly the blue, Neon released the first official trailer for Long Legs. You heard me right. Official trailer. Everything else we've seen has just been teasers. Let's hop right in and see what this has to offer us. The first scene is another part of the sequence of Longlegs being at her home. Parker, I mean, where there is an intense knocking on her door. With this next piece of the puzzle, we can determine that she does go to check the door and goes outside armed. After not seeing him outside, she looks inside to see him there. Then, knowing someone is in her home, she barges back in to confront him. I don't believe this is the moment he gets captured though, I believe this is possibly in her head and maybe her remembering something about her past. A girl is heard asking Harker if it's scary being a lady FBI agent. Is it scary being a lady FBI agent? Yeah. This girl is the daughter of her boss, and it seems like she was invited to their home at some point later on. We then see her at a few crime scenes. One of them is a family that is hidden underneath a comforter. We also see that the cat that was hissing earlier is from this household, and although we don't see who it hisses at, I'm gonna assume it's Harker since we know that's an entity is likely attached to her. After this, she examines a letter left at the crime scene by Longlegs, which when deciphered reads down low to slow. This could have two meanings, one being Longlegs is taunting the FBI, or two, down low could be referring to hell. Parker is then seen at her house deciphering one of his codes on a birthday card, which reads, stood upon the sand of the sea, again calling back to Revelations 13.1 where the beast comes out of the sea. We then get hit by an extremely quick flash of images and scenes. I'm talking like, blink and you'll probably miss some of them, but I'm going to discuss the important ones, one of which is back when Harker was a child, outside of what we are again assuming is her home. This same house Longlegs was both approaching her at, and had his car at. We see more snake imagery right after, and this is where we see one of the most important shots of the entire trailer. The doll he made. The one under the cloak. This is the same doll that was sitting in front of the mirror that he put the black cloak over and is the same exact doll that had glowing red eyes because the backdrop is exactly the same. This one frame changes everything. From here we can confirm that Longlegs does in fact place dolls in each of the households with a demonic presence attached to them, just like a cuckoo would plant its eggs in a nest. This presence almost definitely leads to the killings. Another thing that is extremely important is doesn't this doll look familiar? It should because it perfectly resembles the girl who was working at the hardware store. The same bright blue eyes, same lips, and same facial shape. And if we were to think otherwise, what plays right after this one frame is the scene with her in the hardware store. The reason this is so huge is because this girl doesn't seem to be tied to the murders. In fact, the doll of this girl is given to a family that isn't hers. This could suggest three things. Longlegs creates a doll in the spitting image of some local girls, places them in households, and lets them wreak havoc. The other is that Longlegs takes the soul of someone, rebuilds a doll just like them, and commits these atrocities to have the person reborn with a demonic attachment to them. And the last possibility, Longlegs is building dolls, attaching a demonic entity that lies in these golden orbs into the dolls, placing them into households, and harvesting organs to turn these dolls into real people. After all, what did Geppetto do? He created a puppet that turned into a real boy. This could explain all the imagery with blood bubbling up and some aura coming through a drain, as he could be draining them into the dolls. A question that might rise up is, well, how is he getting the families to take in these dolls? Well, he masked them as birthday presents. Every one of these burners has in fact taken place on or near a birthday. After this, we see Harker likely placing out a series of numbers for the dates these crimes take place. Then we see her translating the letter we figured out earlier, and then we see her looking through the Polaroids that let her feel a psychic connection to Mrs. Camera. We see them 100% guaranteed entering the barn where something is buried in the cedar box, completely confirming that part of the story to be true. Harker is seen connecting the triangles in the library, and now we finally get to see what was watching her down that row of books. The same dark horned figure we saw behind her as a child. It's still here, it never left even after all these years. Harker reads out the passage from 13.1 to her boss at the FBI, again confirming that it is not just a little easter egg and is relevant to the story. Her boss, who we find out is named Agent Carter, asks her what she's hiding from him. 
Again, I believe she's aware he is going to be the next in line for the murders, and she's afraid to tell him because, I mean, how do you tell some guy that you're gonna go crazy and kill your family and then yourself? You know, that's not, that's not something you really could just convey to somebody. The next shot is us finally getting a hint to at least one thing in that cedar box, which is an upside down triangle with a smile on it. What this means, once again, I'm not entirely sure. After this, Longleg says, I know you're not afraid of a little bit of dark. Because you are the dark. While he says this, we do see that shot of the dark, hazy woods again. But there's a new detail this time. For like, once again, a blink and you'll miss it kind of feel. In front of the person on the ground is the same dark horned figure. It moves away into the haze this time. But what does it mean exactly? Is this Harker or is this Longlegs? Or is it neither? Perhaps one of the dolls? Or maybe it's actually Harker's mother. Him saying you are the dark here is important because it lets us know that he's aware Harker has some entity attached to her. The next scene is of the doll under the black cloak and we get to see it taken off. The person taking it off is the girl Longlegs was seen watching at the beginning of Dirty Part 2. Behind her is Miss Camera and who we can now confirm is Mr. Camera, the man who killed the priest, Miss Camera, and the cows. This is interesting because it means that clip of her wandering around outside and dirty is probably after Mr. and Miss Camera died because we know from the Instagram caption that she wasn't at the scene of the crime. She was at school. The next shot is of Miss Camera and it's the same image they posted on Instagram a while back but in action. From the way the camera is angled we can assume that this is the same room she tried to stab the doll in, either before or afterwards. Here we learn she isn't just trying to stab herself, she's actually trying to cut herself open. Even if she seems in pain, no blood is coming out at all. A few shots after this, we see a long legs vehicle outside of Harker's childhood house. This time, we can clearly see inside it, and inside is yet another black cloak figure, which probably means this is a doll in his passenger side seat. Harker is seen observing it from afar. Because of the Instagram post, we know that Harker's birthday is coming up or has already happened, meaning that this doll is likely intended for her. From that, I think it's pretty clear that Harker was intended to be one of the victims of the crime. The reason that he turned away from her is probably because since he has an entity attached to him, he might be able to sense the one in hers. Since she is like him, he let her go. Or at least, that's what I think. Skipping forward a few scenes, we see the face of the person Longleg who's tying up in a close-up. From the face shape, the light eyebrows, and the eye color, this person looks a lot like Alicia Witt, the person playing Harker's mom. We also see Lee's boss letting her into his home, confirming that she goes up to their household. The reason this is important is because, again, I believe Harker realizes his family is next in line for the murders, as he has a daughter, and she wants to save them. Another shot is of a girl we haven't seen yet before in the marketing, although I imagine she's important since it only plays for one frame, and a lot of the most important details have been one frame only. The last sequence of the trailer is Longlegs hitting his head on the table, in which we can confirm that he either attempts to or succeeds in killing himself, as blood splatters all over the place. Throughout the last half of the trailer, Longleg says, You could have made nice with me, but you didn't. And that has led to all of this. I'll be waiting. If you ask me, I think this is what Longlegs tells Harker in the questioning room before killing himself, as I'll be waiting is a very fitting thing to tell someone that you think also could be going to hell. She could have been nice, but instead she captured him and ruined his plans and now is trying to punish him. What he means by he'll be waiting is that he'll be waiting for her either in hell or these circles of hell. Another thing we find out in this trailer is the person that asks Harker if she still says her prayers is actually her mom. She still appears to be alive albeit a little off. Their home is cluttered and full of trash, and she herself looks like she could be doing a little better. This means that even if Longlegs did tie her up, he didn't kill her, but he certainly did something to her that changed her. There is a cipher that plays for one second at the end of the trailer that says, say your prayers. Remember to say your prayers and say your prayers seems to be something that pops up a lot throughout the advertising for this movie. And that seems to either suggest that there is something very, very important about Harker's mother, whether it be she has some trauma revolving her, or 
hear me out here, whether it be because she is the reason this entity is attached to her. Yeah, I know that's a hell of a claim, but give me a second. We see her very obviously kill someone, potentially more than one person. We also see that she has connections to long legs, either because long legs did something to her or because they know one another. She also seems a little off throughout most of the trailers. There is a very large possibility that she is not a Christian nun, rather she is a nun of someone else, if you catch what I mean. Hell, there's even a good chance that that person that was in the woods is actually Harker's mom, not Longlegs or Lee. Of course, this is a wild claim, and there might not be a ton to support it because of what is going on in the advertising. So I'll just leave that piece of information here and see whether that's true or not, because honestly, it doesn't feed into a ton of our theories. There just isn't enough to back it. The description says as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, which might not sound like proper English, and that's because it's not. It's pieces put together of Revelations 13.15, which says, And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. What this excerpt means, according again to Bible Ref, is the second beast, typically known as the false prophet of the end times, will be able to perform false miracles to deceive people. This personnel also oversees construction of some kind of idol honoring the first beast. This first beast being the Antichrist, the same being that rose from the sea that John saw while he stood upon the sand. Another thing I would like to discuss is Revelations 13.11, which says, Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. Two horns like a lamb fits the description of our horned friend pretty well, and the explanation for this in Bible Ref says, This second beast is the seventh dominant character described in this part of Revelation. Harker is the daughter of the seventh she and is seen with a horned figure surrounding her. Would that make her the second beast? This trailer drops a lot on us, probably even too much that I'm sure most people would end up dismissing. We learn that Harker's mom was tied up by Longlegs and that ever since she has been different. We learn that Longlegs creates dolls that either mimic real people in appearance or turn into real people. We learn these dolls host a demon of some kind. We learned how the demise of the camera family came to be, and we continue to learn that something is going on with Harker. The next post would come from Kiernan Shipka on Instagram on June 11th, 2024. This teaser follows the girl that played for one frame in the official trailer. In it, we find out that she is probably a survivor of Long Legs. Harker questions her and we learn that she doesn't remember much of what happened, outside of it feeling like a long dream where she was surrounded by darkness. Do you remember anything? It's like a long dream and so dark, a world of dark, like a nowhere between here and there. Now that she's free, she doesn't ever want to forget him, him probably being long legs. In this teaser, we do get some new shots, one of him leaning over and kissing a doll's forehead as long legs creates it, almost giving it the love a mother would give to a newborn. This doll is different from the one that sat in front of the mirror, and that he put the black cloak on as this one is wearing a sweater, not a nightgown. Another new shot is of what looks to be the girl in this trailer that Harker's speaking to, but as a doll, and on an operating table. At the top, we see the golden ball again that was present on his work desk. I believe that if he is harvesting organs to put them in dolls, this is probably where he does it. Arguably the most important new shot in this teaser is that we finally get to see what was in the cedar box at the camera family. It was the doll they were given. However, it looks as if it's aged quite a bit. It's missing hair and her eyes are either closed or have gone completely white. I think this suggests that this doll probably did have a soul at one point because of the Satan Says poem, but since we buried it underground, the soul is gradually leaving, hence why it's rotted so much. That's all this one brings to the table, although it does support some theories. It doesn't bring us a lot of new juice. At least, I didn't think so until I started to go and check just who Kiernan Shipka is. This survivor of Long Lakes was playing. She's Carrie Ann Camera. She's the daughter of the Camera family. The one that survived the birthday murders confirmed. This makes complete sense because we know she lived. She was at school after all. Although the thing that makes this even stranger is that if you compare the two side by side, they don't even look remotely like the same person. Of course, we can assume she's aged some since the crime took place, but I've got no clue. 
Does this suggest she too has a demonic spirit attached to her now? Just like Harker does. If that is the case, what was the purpose of the girl at the hardware store? Did we turn her into a doll or did we just make one that looked identical to her? Did a doll come to life from her? Regardless of what this could imply, we'd get more new material on June 14th, 2024. Probably the most important bit of it all. Neon Rated would post a photo of a newspaper page, but whether it's a real article or not has been hard to find out. The page is full of Long Legs language, and at the bottom it says this page was printed and requested by Long Legs. When deciphered, this large block of text states, Little Angel Little Star, There She Is, The Birthday Girl, Downstairs At Your Door, Hark The Herald Angel. It only gets better from here, remember to forget, The Dirty Red Work of Destruction, I Would Not Hurt a Fly. Dirty and Sweet My Girl, Backwards Scratch My Eye, Such a black revelation, killing for sweet relief, crowns and horns his kingdom, off with every head, up from every hole, everyone is dead. I am the traveling monster, everybody bleeds the same colors, behold six is the number, behold pink is the letter. Wow, that's a lot, isn't it? Let's try to take it one chunk at a time. Starting with Little Angel, Little Star, there she is, the birthday girl, downstairs at your door, hark the herald angel. Little Angel is interesting because a few days after this post would be released, we would get, of course, the drop about the phone call, and in it Longlegs addresses the caller as Little Angel. With this billboard announcement, we got a photo of Harker on the phone with someone. From this, we can assume that Harker called Longlegs by some means and that he's referring to her as Little Angel. This can be backed up by the fact that there was an Instagram post stating it was Harker's birthday and another Instagram post about Micah Monroe's birthday. You might try to say, guys, why is that a point they never mentioned Nicolas Cage? And by that, you'd be right. His birthday passed with no mention. Neon seems to consistently draw association between Harker and the birthday girl. If this wasn't enough, downstairs at your door can be connected to the post about Harker's mother, as door to door, there she goes. This could also be referring to Harker's house, as we see that she has a two-story house when she is a child. And of course, we know that Longlegs visits this two-story house. A herald angel in the Bible is someone who is meant to be a messenger of God, which could again be connected to Harker or her mom. It only gets better from here, remember to forget, the dirty red work of destruction, I would not hurt a fly. It only gets better from here could suggest that as Longlegs commits these crimes, more and more dolls will come to life. Remember to forget seems to call back to the survivor of his, as she can't remember. The dirty red work of destruction is probably referring to murder, as that is definitely a work of destruction and is red and dirty. I Would Not Hurt a Fly is a reference to Sefer Hasidim, a medieval Hebrew text that included in it not to harm any animals, including insects like wasps and flies. Dirty and sweet, my girl. Backwards, scratch my eye. Such a black revelation, killing for sweet relief. Dirty and sweet is likely again calling back to Get It On from T-Rex. Backwards, scratch my eye. I'll be up front, I've got no clue about this one. Such a black revelation seems like it could be related to revelations from the Bible, but I think it could be a reference to a series of short stories called Revelations in Black from Carl Jacoby. There are two short stories from this book that hold some significance here at a glance, the first being of course the title story Revelations in Black, and the other being Satan's Piano. Although I skimmed through them and didn't see anything particularly relevant, Killing for Sweet Relief probably calls to death being Sweet Relief as you no longer have to worry about anything of the living again. So this could imply Longlegs is freeing these people. At least, he thinks so. Crowns and horns his kingdom, off with every head, up from every hole, everyone is dead. Crowns and Horns His Kingdom is yet another callback to Revelation 13.1. Going back to T-Rex's song, Get It On, the Hydra means a multifarious evil or an evil having many sources, not to be overcome by a single effort. Longlegs is creating, from what we can assume, multiple dolls, as we see at least three so far in these trailers. While you can get rid of one of the problems, another will arise in its place. Off with every head, up from every hole, I believe is deeply connected and can suggest two things. One being that once decapitated, the souls leave their bodies, and the other being that after decapitation, a new head is born in its place. Everyone is dead is initially pretty blunt, but after some thinking, it's likely a reference to Revelations since it talks about the end times, hence everyone is dead. I am the traveling monster. Everybody bleeds the same colors. Behold, six is the number, behold, pink is the letter. 
I Am the Traveling Monster refers to Longlegs himself, as in the birthday murders, he's noted to kill in a different county every single time. Everyone bleeds these same colors. Not too sure of the meaning of this one. I mean, everyone does, in fact, bleed red. Behold, six is the number. Behold, pink is the letter. To understand this, I will need to get into some of the birthday murders. I'm sure you've seen it flash on screen a few times in this video, but at every crime scene, a nine-year-old is killed in the birthday murders. A pink birthday letter is found with, of course, the number nine on it. If you turn this number upside down, it reads six. Coincidentally, six nine-year-olds were killed in Longleg's first run before he seemingly disappeared for a decade. Of course, six is the number of Satan, so we can gather where this might be going. If the newspaper already didn't give us enough to sink our teeth into, at the top of the page, it says, quote, a paid advertisement for the birthdaymurders.net. It was at this point in time where everyone that was following the advertising could become active participants in the story. So let's see what this website has to offer, shall we? Off the bat, it's already incredibly eerie and feels like a website we do not belong on. Kind of like a dark website, since the background is very graphic photos of crime scenes. There are three tabs to navigate on this website. The home page, the victims page, and the contact page. I tried some typical tricks for websites like this, such as checking source code and brightening the page or zooming out, and there seems to be no hidden secrets lying around like that. So for now, let's just take a look at the home page. Here the owner of the website writes a small excerpt saying, For nearly three decades, this Satan-worshipping psycho has terrorized families throughout the Pacific Northwest. A bloody trail of bodies here in the great state of Oregon attests to the depraved savagery of this one-of-a-kind serial killer. With over three dozen victims that we now know of, Longlegs is one of the most prolific mass murderers ever to have graced the region, and his gruesome endeavors are the stuff of nightmares. At first, all of the killings appeared to be straightforward murder-suicides, the handiwork of average men who suddenly snapped and slaughtered their wives and children. But a series of eerie coded messages left at the crime scenes indicate that someone or something is influencing these horrific crimes. The cryptic letters are signed by someone calling himself Long Legs. From this small paragraph, we can learn a lot. Firstly, I'd like to say I really enjoy how the website seems to be end universe as they're treating all of the Long Legs crimes as very real. It's pretty cool to feel like a detective that's assisting and helping solve these series of crimes. While the trailers and teasers have many overlaps to religion and Harker is definitely diving into the occult, this is the first time we get overt mentions that the crime scenes have satanic imagery at times. While we see a husband killing in the trailers, this is also the first time we learn that it's always a husband that kills his whole family. It's mentioned that Long Legs has been acting for three decades now, which again is crazy because he doesn't seem to have aged a day in those 30 years. This loops back to snake worship and Ning Yijida, as he seems to be shedding his skin and not growing older. We also know that all of these crimes take place in Oregon now, which is pretty cool I guess. At the bottom of the homepage, it says to tune back in on June 24th for more updates. Well. Alright, seems simple enough. Let's see what else this website has to offer. Under the contact section of the website, we get an email, info at thebirthdaymurders.net. However, if you were to email this address, you would get a return email saying it doesn't exist. Underneath is a physical address, friend of a friend, 3525 Potts Road, Colflax, WA 99111. One thing that caught my eye immediately after reading this is even though all of the crimes take place in Oregon, the person behind this website lives in Washington. Doing a quick Google search of this address seems to lead you to just a long road in the middle of nowhere. I tried to see what a street view looked like and that option wasn't available. Not to mention this is the first time friend of a friend has ever been mentioned in the long legs lore, so we have no clue who this person could be. At least we now know how to refer to this person. This kind of places us at a dead end for now though on this page. At the top of the page, friend of a friend states Long Legs has 38 kills, which I'll say confirmed kills because we know this website doesn't count the camera family, and says that every family was good church going people. One little cheeky thing that's written is that it behooves us to take a moment of silence to honor their memory. Behoove could be taken as a pun if we were to assume that friend of a friend is a demon, given that they are typically seen with hooves for feet. The other thing about this sentence is that the usage of us 
signaling that there could be more than one person behind this website. I'd like to preface before diving into each family that I won't describe every little detail of the murder because this video is already really long and we'd be here a lot longer if I did that. And also, it tends to get a little repetitive as it goes on. If you wish to read all of the listings yourself, the link will be in the description so feel free. What I will do is talk about where the crime happened, the date that it happened, who died, and any details relating to religion that I may have found. Here are some things I noticed that don't necessarily fit in that discussion, but seem to be consistent in the murders. The first is every one of these families only had daughters. Not one had a son. Most of these writings about the families also seem to really idolize the fathers of these families. Not so much on the mothers, which is a little weird because the mothers are always killed really brutally, so you'd think they'd be given some type of credit. The first family Longlegs is thought to have been involved with is the Applewhite family. This is almost ironic because Applewhite is a name tied to the cult Heavensgate, since Marshall Applewhite is one of the founders for it. Besides that, one thing you will quickly notice is that these families he tends to go after aren't random. It's extremely calculated. Take for example the Applewhite's daughter. She is 9 years old and named Teresa, which she happens to again share that name with a very famous saint, Mother Teresa. The family lived on Rhododendron Street, where a Rhododendron in the Donga religion is a flower that guards the underworld. The town that the murder took place was Damascus, which is a town that serves many purposes in the Bible. In Revelation specifically, it was a city that was reduced to ruins. And lastly, the date it took place on was July 14th, 1966. July 14th is the day of feast for St. Kateri Takakawitha. I'm sorry if I said that wrong, which a feast day is meant to celebrate the life of a saint. A somewhat popular one is St. Joseph's Day on March 19th. This day is also right after the Richard Speck murders, which Speck was believed to be the first mass murderer in American history. To top it all off, her organs were harvested post-mortem. Oh, and of course, how can we forget? It was Teresa's birthday! So off the bat, we have a girl killed at the age of nine whose name is shared with a saint, a murder that took place on a feast day, on a street with ties to the underworld, and her organs were taken from the scene. All seems like it's very intentional, right? One similarity between all the crime scenes too is that typically the mother is killed in the most brutal of ways. Which again makes me think back to Lamesh too since she was known to cause harm to mothers. I'd also like to note that these brutal murders could be because humans were created in God's image, so by disfiguring his creation through incredibly violent killings, you are ruining his image. The next family is the Clover family. We talked a bit about them earlier, but I'll refresh your memory just in case. Immediately the name strikes a religious chord since the three-leaf clover is symbolic for the Holy Trinity, that being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are the first family to be mentioned having a white house, which may sound like a weird detail, but every house that these crimes take place at is white. Even in the film, we can see the cameras own a white house with a white barn, and Harker's childhood house is also white. So this isn't a coincidence. One thing that's odd though is that their daughter, Miranda, is 10 years old. A quick Google search shows us that Miranda is not the name of a saint, although some may mistake it for one because of Mother Miranda from Resident Evil. It's noted that the same level of savagery was committed here as the Applewhites, which could imply Miranda had her organs taken out, but we aren't 100% sure. However, unlike at the Applewhites, the Clovers hosted a myriad of satanic imagery in their household. This could be because their name Clover represents the Holy Spirit and Longlegs is trying to disgrace God. The last thing to note with this one is it takes place on June 20th, 1968. This is two years after the last murder, which leads me to believe that there is a crime this website doesn't know about. Kind of like how the camera family isn't listed on here, even though we know Longlegs was involved in this 1975 crime. Also, June 20th is once again on a saint's feast day. The next crime involves the Pendergast family. Pendergast is a name very similar to Prendergast, which is the last name of a Catholic archbishop, Edmund Francis Prendergast. It's also the last name of Terence Prendergast, another archbishop. And not only that, this name could be a reference to the Pendergast book series, which is the story of an FBI agent investigating several serial killers. The father of the Pendergast family, Thomas Pendergast, was cited at his work mumbling about his youngest daughter not really being his daughter. Now obviously, this should ring a bell. This is what the disgruntled father was saying and every year there is another. The thing is though, we know he isn't the same father from that video, as the video appears to be the Horns family. 
So that means that the youngest not really being his daughter is a popular sentiment among these fathers. The Pendergasts had two daughters, Rhonda, a 10-year-old, and Luis, a 9-year-old. Luis not only, again, is a 9-year-old, but she also shares the same name with a saint, Luis de Marillac. The day that the crime took place was August 9th, which is a day in the old calendar for Orthodox churches to commemorate a list of saints. This also happens to coincide with the infamous Manson family murders, where Charles Manson let a cult to kill anywhere from 9 to 24 people. And the Pendergast family was noted to all have been decapitated, but oddly enough their cause of death was blood loss? Not losing their heads? So that implies their decapitation was post-mortem, but then that begs the question, why were they decapitated? Could this have anything to do with that line from the newspaper? This is the first crime scene we get to see the little birthday cards he's been leaving behind, and it's a pink letter with the number 9, which when turned upside down, again, is a 6. In case you may have forgotten, this was, again, in the Seattle Times newspaper. Behold, 6 is the number. Behold, pink is the letter. Pink being the letter could be taken literally as the card is actually pink, or as in stereotypical gender norms, since girls are associated with the color pink, and he seems to only be making dolls of and targeting little girls for murder. After this, the Wormwood family was targeted. The name, just like the last few, has religious implications. The first being Wormwood is used in the Bible as a term to represent bitterness, or that the earth will soon have troubled times. Wormwood is also a junior tempter in the Screwtape Letters, a novel where his uncle, who is a senior demon, tries to teach his nephew how to tempt and damn a man. Not only this, Wormwood is directly mentioned in Revelations 8.11, the name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The crime took place on Marigold Drive of Gaylord, Oregon. The reason this is important is because Marigold is a flower typically associated with the Virgin Mary in Christianity. As for the children, there were three, Julia, a 14-year-old, Patricia, an 11-year-old, and Cynthia, another nine-year-old, and a reference to Christianity as Saint Cynthia or Quinthia was a real person. The way they were murdered was by having their throats filleted, which sounds pretty fucking insane. The last detail about this crime is that it took place on either April 17th or 18th, as we know the crime was reported on the 18th, but don't know for sure if that's the day it happened. This means it either took place on the first or second day of the Easter Tridum, which is just a fancy way to say Easter weekend. At the scene of this crime was Longleg's car, and I'm not a car person, so I appreciate them for pointing out that it's a Chevrolet Nomad. Nomad is interesting in itself, as a nomad in shamanism is a person who believes in physical objects or things to have souls. The Hesse family was next on Longleg's agenda. Hesse is a name that harbors a few references. The first being Hesse is the name of a city in Germany where a stone called Wiltenstein is located, which local legend says the devil tried to destroy a church and left his scratch marks on that stone. The other was a novelist named Hermann Hesse, who wrote a book titled Demon. This book has many mentions of Abraxas, a Gnostic deity who most recently was a key part of Late Night with the Devil, and the novel tells about a boy who is struggling with self-identity and feels as if he's living in two worlds at once. This should sound very familiar because Carrie Ann Camera was saying that she felt like she was present in two worlds at once. With this family though, there doesn't seem to be too much importance with the street or town at all that the crime took place, although there is probably some significance with the date. On March 12th, Pope Gregory died in 604, and then later in 1088, Pope Urban II was elected. The family had one daughter, Mary Kathleen, another nine-year-old, although this time her name doesn't connect to a saint. Instead, her name, Mary, is the name of Jesus' mother, the Virgin Mary. Her feet and hands were removed from her body post-mortem. At the scene of the crime, a pet parakeet was decapitated. Which was really odd, since we know later on that he lets a cat live. Well, I did some digging, and the reason the parakeet was likely killed was probably because Jesus was thought to actually have a pet parakeet. And lastly, this was the first time that Loglegs cued us into his usage of inverted triangles. And this is all that we have left for this part of the website. So Longleg seems to be taking pieces of the bodies of these nine-year-olds, such as their feet and hands, one of their heads, and a lot of blood. The murders may be ritualistic of some kind, also given that the cause of death always appears to be blood loss. Oh wait, there's a hyperlink at the bottom of the page, written in the Longleg cipher. Hmm. 
It says nine circles we descend. Well, would you look at that? Yet another reference to the nine circles of hell. Clicking the hyperlink starts a download for RAR files, and to extract the files, we actually need a password. Shockingly, though, the translated long leg cipher is also the password for this extraction. After taking the files out, we get some pretty brutal ass images of the crime scene. Like, I don't think I can show these on YouTube. <laughs> All of the files are TIFF files, which are basically just big images made for websites, but one of them is a JPEG. I clicked on it, and it is different from the rest, although I'm not sure what to make of it. I put it in Photoshop and messed around with the brightness, and tried to see if anything would stand out, which it's clear that there is some type of message here at the top of the image, but it's mostly faded out and has either an intense flash or it was poorly developed, so I cannot make out at all what this is intended to be at the top. Although we can dig deeper here, as every image is actually a cipher in itself. A number cipher. This is the first time we've seen it in this ARG, so I'll let Juliet explain. A number cipher is the same as a symbol cipher, but every symbol is replaced by a number equivalent to the letters place in the alphabet. So A equals 1, B equals 2, and so forth. The images read the following words. And, but, death, die, escape, jewel A, long, revelation, the fifth trumpet, them, they, two, and then will, twice. The one JPEG image is the file titled Revelation, meaning that the, this message at the top I can assume is a chapter and line number from Revelations. Which one is it though? I'm not sure. There are connections to Revelations 9 though, one is 9-1 and the other is 9-6. However, I believe the entire excerpt is important, so I will read all six lines. And the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them, and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. This small passage actually uncovers a lot of the story for us. The fifth trumpet that was blown signals the beginning of end times in the Bible. The star mentioned in the passage, according to Bible Ref, is a key to the underworld. This key is one that Satan cannot obtain himself and must be given to him to open the gates of hell. In some later marketing on Instagram, one of the posts says, quote, don't let him in. Letting long legs in could be the same as giving the devil the key to the underworld, as they are in turn letting the locusts out onto the earth. What I mean by that is there are direct connections to the locusts mentioned in this passage and the dolls long legs puts out into these houses. Take Miss Camera, for example. We know that after the doll arrived at her house, she's attempting to kill herself but seems to have no luck in doing so. She is suffering and feeling some type of pain and will do anything to stop it. She even tries to kill the doll. This is a one-to-one -one with the locusts making people want to kill themselves, but they can't. This torture would make these people experience a death of their soul, separating them from God. A separation from God sounds like a good way to lead to a real-life murder. Jewel A is the only thing that doesn't clearly relate to Revelations in some form. There are two possible meanings for this one. The one that sticks out to me again is this weird golden ball thing, but I don't know, I'm just really obsessed with trying to figure out what this thing even is. The other meaning, probably the correct one of the two, is that T-Rex had a song called Jewel. This song's meaning is trying to dig into where the mind goes during some of its darkest times, which in a way could come back to Revelations. It also could be after the dolls take place in the household, because the families go to their darkest places in their minds, and then that leads of course the father to murdering people. And that's everything we got for the June 14th Long Lakes drop. Isn't it a fucking lot of information? This website quite literally changed the game the moment it dropped, and it's continued to change the game as it has updated since. While we've worked on this video, it's continued to make updates, so we're going to for sure include at least one of the updates in this video. After this, June would continue to prove to be the biggest month for Long Legs so far. We're gonna take a breather by talking about the phone call billboard now though, because that at least is a pretty small one. Three days later, on June 17th, 2024, someone would post about seeing a billboard for Long Legs in the wild. The only things on it were Long Legs peeking out of the corner, a phone number, and the release date. Nothing else was on it, and it wasn't even mentioned to drop on their Instagram until after it was discovered. The phone number on its own is ominous, with 666 being the mark of the beast, and 4355 spelling hell on a phone keypad. 
We played a little bit of the phone call for you earlier, but now we'll play the whole phone call. There she is. And what's your name? Little Angel? Nice to meet you. creepy, right? We already talked about it a little before, but I'll bring it up again. With this drop, an image of Harker on an old coin phone was released too. This suggests Harker ends up calling Longlegs, and we can deduce Little Angel is likely referring to her because of the Seattle Times article. I'll be waiting is a line we heard him say in the first official trailer, and I still do think it means he'll be waiting for her in hell. After all, nine circles we descend. On June 24th, the Birthday Murders website would update. With it, another billboard came up, this being yet another photo of Longlegs. This photo seems to be from the same scene with Harker and him outside, and on this image is one of his ciphers. It reads, The Beast Should Speak. The description says, Friend of a Friend of a Friend, which is also huge. This means whoever runs the Birthday Murders website is friends with or knows who Longlegs is. There are coordinates in the description also, but these seem to just bring you to where the billboard is in real life, that being LA. Let's get to the meat then, shall we? What changed on the website? Well, as far as the contact and homepage go, nothing. If you inspect the element, nothing happened in the source code. Brightening up the page and zooming out still don't do anything. The one thing new is on the homepage, and it's that these updates aren't over, as we'll be getting another one July 1st. Nothing has changed with any of the old murders, but we do have two new ones to discuss. The first of them is the Angstrom family. Their crime took place on November 17th, 1972, a year and some months after the last crime. November 17th was, as per usual, a feast day for saints. Elizabeth of Hungary. There is no religious meaning to the name Angstrom, but their nine-year-old daughter Polly has meaning in hers. Polly is a nickname for Mary, connecting back again to the Virgin Mary. Similar to the other nine-year-old victims, Polly had a piece of her removed post mortem, although this time it was her face. It definitely seems like Longlegs is harvesting blood, organs, and body parts which we know is probably to create a doll that turns into real people. Something else that may be notable is that this was the sixth confirmed crime, signaling possibly some importance because it's Satan's number. There were some new things here that weren't as heavy at other crime scenes, this being the house had multiple inverted triangles in it, a cipher was left, and a book titled The Golden Bow, A Study in Magic and Religion, was open to page 187. The cipher reads, A sweet treat to make you smile. Nine circles we descend. You never forget your first. Friend of a friend of a friend. So in case we were confused of Longlegs having connections to friend of a friend, this all but confirms they somehow know each other. Nine circles we descend, again, suggests Longlegs being a traveler of the abyss. A sweet treat to make you smile, I guess could be referring to temptation, or, you know, maybe just a birthday cake since it's their birthday. You never forget your first is a very interesting line because this is a very well-known saying. Typically, this is used when talking about romance because you never forget your first love. I'm not entirely convinced it's referring to love in this instance, but what it does mean eludes me. The Golden Bows page isn't included on the website, so I had to look it up, and I found various different versions of the books that all had different page 187s. I found the two that felt the most relevant, although I won't read you the whole page for either essence in one of them is that in New Zealand, there's a folk tale about a chieftain who had ancestral power similar to that of a voodoo doll flowing through him. Whoever were to eat after him, wear his clothes, or interact with anything he had pretty much eventually ended up dying. In the other book, which this one is likely much more relevant since it involves Oregon folk tales, it's believed that a lost soul can be brought back in a physical form. The Salish or Flathead Native Americans of Oregon believe that a man's soul may be separated for a time from his body without causing death and without the man being aware of his loss. Another quote later on saying, again, souls may be extracted from their body or detained on their wanderings not only by ghosts and demons but also by men, especially by sorcerer. 
The page also mentioned that a sorcerer may place something in someone's household dubbed a soul snare that would take the man's soul. Given the last teaser with the black orb in Harker's head and the constant recurrences of the golden ball, this patches likely suggests Longlegs is finding wandering souls and placing them into the dolls. That he potentially turns into real people. Take for example Carrie Ann Camera, who said, quote, It was like a long dream, a world of dark, nothing but dark. Then one day she came to, and because of that, she'll never forget him. It sounds like her soul was lost and then given a new purpose. This isn't the only time this book is mentioned though. The other family in this update is the Weir family. First, I'd like to note that Longlegs seems to have been noticed at the scene of the crime before it took place, as neighbors reported seeing an elderly woman standing around the house. This means that Longlegs, someone who already seems pretty old, again seemed about this age here too. Of course, I've already beat the head on this a few times, but I think this suggests Longlegs doesn't appear to age. Almost every detail had a fair bit of connections to Christianity. The date it took place, August 19th, is the Transfiguration for Orthodox Churches, which is a giant feast. The department that investigated it, the Hemlock Department, connects to the Hemlock plant as in the Bible it allegedly became poisonous after Jesus' blood touched it post-crucifixion. There are two daughters in this family, one named Veronica, who is 12 years old and shares a name with a saint, and the other is of course a 9-year-old with her name being Rosemary. This is the third crime to have a 9-year-old with a name relating to the Virgin Mary, as the Rosemary was thought to be her favorite plant. This whole family died from blood loss and looks like they may have been placed in a sink or a bathtub. The mother was stabbed exactly 66 times, which is, ooh, a spooky number. One away from the beast. The murders took place on Grimaldi Way, a reference to Francesco Maria Grimaldi, who was a Jesuit priest. And the neighborhood was Mount Golgotha. Coincidentally, Golgotha is thought to be the area outside of Jerusalem's walls where Jesus was crucified. And if there weren't enough religious connections already, this was the sixth nine-year-old killed in these murders. At this scene, the golden bow was found again, but this time on page 226. This page discusses how religion has always gone after magic and magicians because magic is against God. Feels kind of calling out to creating false miracles, I believe. This murder site also had yet another cipher. The knifer says, quote, Whiter than milk the slider can. You catch the cuckoo bird's sister destroyer. Take it and eat it. Turn your stomach sour. The last line seems to be a direct reference to the previous Golden Bow page, the one specifically about eating after a chieftain and dying. Not only this though, it calls to Revelations 10.9, which says, quote, So I went to an angel and asked him to gift me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. According to Bible Ref, this passage means that John's eating of the scroll suggests that he is taking on the message of God to deliver it to others. However, upon building an immediate connection to God, he saw that judgment and destruction was to come. Catch the Cuckoo Bird seems to refer to the dolls, I imagine, especially since the line later says Sister Destroyer. The doll is always a girl in a family with only a daughter, which would make the real daughter the doll's sister. Wider than milk the slider can, well I'm not too sure about the mention of milk, maybe referring to mothers again, the slider is another song by the band T-Rex. Of course though, the meaning behind this song is not really decipherable. The Weir family had an insane amount of religious connections to them, and it's probably no coincidence that this was his six nine-year-old related crime. It was also his seventh crime overall. I've seen some theories suggesting that Harker was probably the daughter of the Weir family, since she's the daughter of the seventh, but I don't believe that to be the case because she would be too old in this instance. We know she's already around because of the Instagram posts too detailing an event from seven months earlier. And this is where, according to the birthday murders, Longlegs seems to disappear for nearly a decade. We know this to not be true since the Camera family was attacked by him the next year after the Weir family. Whether Longlegs committed more crimes or not in between this time and didn't kill the daughters, we aren't so sure. At the bottom of the page is a new hyperlink that reads friend of a friend. The password to extract this time around is simply just friend of a friend. Once inside, we get a series of images that appear to be number ciphers again, an audio file, and another RAR file. The images are all crime scenes except for one, which is just a black photo with a tiny white square on the side. I tried to brighten it up to see if anything new would show, but nothing did. The audio file is shockingly the 911 call for every year there is another, where we can actually hear the father is absolutely terrified. 911, what's your emergency? It's... It's my daughter. But it's not my daughter. Sir, who's not your daughter? I gotta be quiet. I gotta be quiet. 
Doctor, where are you? When you're sleeping. When you're sleeping, it's the best time to do it. Do what? When her eyes are closed. Sir, can you stay on the line with me? He says when they're sleeping, it's the best time to do it, meaning this is probably the best time to kill them. Although it's hard to tell if when she's sleeping is referring to his daughter or the doll because it did look like the dolls could close their eyes. The number cipher reads, A, head, like, my, revolver, she, and used. We can make a sentence out of this, which reads, she used my head like a revolver, and this is another reference to a T-Rex song titled Planet Queen. This song talks about the dragon heads, give me your daughter, and using heads as revolvers. The meaning of this song seems to be talking about temptation or desire and how dangerous it can be. As for the RAR file, it also has a password in it. At first, I tried Planet Queen to see if it worked, but it didn't. So then I tried, she used my head like a revolver and that one did work. And once it's extracted, wow, this one has a lot in it. Off the bat, we can see that this once again houses a myriad of number ciphers. We have a mixture of crime photos, film photos, and excerpts from a religious text. The first image is from a book saying, quote, prayer against the evil spirits. Upon trying to look up the specific page or this book, I couldn't find either, but I did find it on the website Tota. This prayer specifically is from ancient Mesopotamia or Sumerian religion and was depicted on a tablet with Lamash 2 on it and was meant to ward her away. This makes sense because like I said earlier, she was depicted as seven witches in incantations. Not only this, but the incantation specifies that a wife must bear no sons. Huh. That's very interesting now, isn't it? The next few images have been found thanks to Reddit user Elizabeth August to be from the movie Hoxon, released in 1922. This film you can actually watch for free right now on Tubi if you wanted to, but it's a silent film that explores the history of witchcraft, demonology, and Satanism. I'll be real, I don't plan to watch this, so I'm going to cite when accomplished 7036 for the context of these scenes. The first image from the film is a nun holding a knife, possessed by evil spirits and in a dreamlike state. This seems to check out what we know about what happens at some of these crime scenes, as at some point the father mentally checks out and slaughters his family. This could, of course, also be referring to the only other nun we know in this film, Harker's mom, suggesting something possesses her and leads her to kill those people. The second shot is of what seems to be a group of people standing here before a horned figure in the dark of the night. The context for the scene is a witch is being mistreated by the devil for not performing enough evil deeds. The meaning for this one is peculiar. So Longleg seems to continually think of himself as a sorcerer, given the golden bow pages, and we continually see the dark horned figure in the trailers. Maybe this figure is actually relating to him and is upset at him for not doing enough evil things. Or maybe Longlegs is upset at Harker for going to the path of the FBI if they are connected to one another. I'm not sure. This one could have many representations, but only one will prevail once this movie comes out. The next frame is a pure red drawing of a naked woman tied up. This drawing is related to the Salem witch trials, as the woman is thought to be a witch, so they tied her up and planned to throw her into a river to see if she lives. And the last shot was of two people talking, the context being a woman claiming her husband is sick from a witch's spell. This one is like super on the nose. I mean, come on. We all know that the husbands of these families fall victim after the doll's influence is on the household. My only question then is the witch Longlegs or Lamash 2? Or are Lamash 2 and Longlegs the same being? Another image is once again the incantation to ward Lamash 2 away. However, we get to see more of it this time. It goes on to list certain figures that would keep Lamash 2 away. Of these seven, the first is the South Wind. This is referring to the mythical Mesopotamian figure Adapa, who is most commonly known for the story Adapa and the South Wind. He was a key part in the religion as he was thought to be used for exorcism rituals. However, it could also refer to Pazuzu as he was thought to be the personification of the South Wind. The second is a dragon with mouth agape. Upon trying to find this, I found Mushuzu, who is a hybrid creature said to have a long neck and tail, two horns on its head, a snake-like tongue, and a crest. A little bit more reading and we can learn that to them the constellation referred to as Hydra was known to be a serpent. This should call back even more to the story as we have talked about this Hydra several times now. Another image is a photo of Pazuzu with long legs text around him saying, Son of Hombi, King of Wind Demon. Which is just more descriptions for Pazuzu if we were confused. 
While Pazuzu may have been depicted to possess Reagan McNeil and the Exorcist, and can be dangerous and destructive, the spirit is also meant to ward off evil or to protect from malicious intent. This specific page seems to be a ward to keep away Lamesh too, as he was typically used to ward her away from households. There is actually a historic amulet where it depicts Pazuzu chasing her away from a victim. So wherever this image comes from, it's likely trying to protect themselves or their family from Lamesh too. One of the images, as I mentioned, is a cipher, and it has some spelling errors, but we will correct them. The name of the star is called Wormwood. Bow all the way down to the metal guru. Work that gets dirty as it cleans, like a bloody mop, like a rag. The star being Wormwood is both likely referring to the Wormwood family, as well as a direct reference to Revelations. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Bow all the way down to your metal guru is another reference to T-Rex, this time their song Metal Guru. It shows a complicated relationship between the singer and this metal guru as he seems to doubt its existence but wants its help regardless. This could be either a call to God or to Satan. Work that gets dirty as it cleans seems to oddly enough be a reference to the Mr. Wormwood's job from the Wormwood family as he was a technician at the Multnomah County Waste Management. This is probably Longlegs trying to leave a bread trail to see if people can figure out what's going on. The last line, like a bloody mop like a rag, I have no clue really what it means. There are two other pages from books, but I'm not sure what to make from them, so I'll play them on screen real quick. Here's the first one. Feel free to pause and read. And here's the second one. Now let's try and figure these number ciphers out. When decoded, they read, and, angels, deceiver, down, down, Earth, he, him, his, of, Revelation L, Slider, the, three times, the woman and the dragon, throne, throne, to, was, where, whole, with, and world. Wow, okay, this one had a lot and some repeating words too. Looking up the woman and the dragon takes us to Revelations 12, which reads, And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. This dragon is the beast, or Satan, and is going to eat her baby the moment she's about to give birth. The reason being that this child will be like Jesus, a child of God to bring the world together and rule with kindness. This child was saved by God, however, and Satan and his demons were cast out of heaven back to the earth. What relevance this has to long legs, though, I've got no idea. You telling me I've read all of that for no reason? <laughs> What the fuck? And that brings to a close the June 24th update. Wow, we learned a lot with this one. So it seems Lamas 2 is absolutely involved in Longleg's crimes, whether he is her or whether he places some essence of hers in these dolls. There is an undeniable amount of religious connections to each family Longlegs goes after. Even parakeets aren't safe from him. Some of the families seem to be aware of what's going on and trying to find out how to stop it, either through the Golden Bow or through channeling Pazuzu. Whether this works or not, we've yet to see. This could be the case with Carrie Ann's family and why she ended up living. The next website update is July 1st, but that comes a little too close to the release of the film, and I want to get this video done before it comes out. If this video does well, we will be sure to cover any future updates to the lore because this has been a lot of fun. Alright, in the last nearly two hours, we've thrown a lot at you. Let's try and recap this information and explain to you what I think Longlegs is really about. Longlegs is either possessed by Hanbi, the king of evil, or Lamesh II. Although it is possible he is a manifestation of the devil, he goes and finds good Christian families who have aspects of them that are symbolic to Christianity, whether it be name, location, or other reasons. These houses always seem to be white because white is a symbol of purity and most literature. He then gives them dolls with Lamesh Chu's essence inside of it disguised as a birthday present for the youngest daughters, where it then proceeds to wreak havoc. These families all are with daughters to satiate Lamesh Chu's desire to harm mothers and children, where she tortures the father of the family with her presence, leading him to go mad and kill the whole family and then himself. 
Lamesh 2's presence in the doll makes the most sense as these families seem to be invoking Pazuzu to ward Lamesh 2 away, and also because the prayer of evil spirits seems to directly link to Lamesh 2. The figure under the cloak looks womanly in nature too, and it also feels like a reference to the exorcist in a way, so I doubt they would want to do Pazuzu again. It would also explain why the mothers always die the most brutal deaths, as Lamesh 2 seemed to really hate moms. Not only this, but the dolls embody the locusts from Revelations, as no one can kill themselves. Only the father can end their suffering. After the crime has been committed, Longlegs comes into the house to drain the blood of the families, gather organs or body parts he may need, and or provide worship all over the house for Satan. He wants to make sure he's a witch that performs enough nefarious deeds to please his overlord. Everything listed above seems to be either pretty accurate or spot on because it's hard to argue otherwise. It's after this point of the story that things could be branched off into multiple routes, so we'll take it one at a time. The first possible path, Longlegs is harvesting these organs to make a doll of human flesh, performing a false miracle by bringing it to life. This would make him the Antichrist, which lines up with his references to him being the man downstairs. This also winds up with Cage referring to his character as a possessed Geppetto because Geppetto brought life to a doll albeit unintentionally. Lee Harker was once a wandering soul and then was placed into one of these dolls and brought to life. This would explain why he would refer to her as Little Angel or know who she is. However, because Longlegs puts her in a doll, pieces of Lamas 2 came too. This would explain why she is the daughter of the seventh she, as Lamas 2 is the seventh she. It would also explain why Harker has psychic abilities. A horned demon seems to reside with Harker, but who it is for sure, we don't really know. She then found her way to who ended up being her mother, Ruth Harker. Ruth realized there was something wrong with the child and tried to kill her, but Longlegs interfered to let his creation live. After this, Harker's mom was never the same. After creating Lee, Longlegs continues to try and make more dolls, trying to make each one of them come to life and planting them in households to have them be raised as their own, hence a cuckoo. What Longlegs didn't realize is that his creations would be able to think freely, and seeing something happen to her mom made Lee decide she wanted to join law enforcement. She wanted to catch a killer. Because of her psychic abilities, she quickly begins to solve the case and remember who he is to her. Her second sight allows her to see that the next family to be in line of the murder is her boss's family, as he seems to have a daughter around the age of nine. They prepare their house to be ready for his attack, and they manage to arrest him. After being captured, Longlegs is upset at her for not playing nice because she is his creation, and then attempts to kill himself. What happens from here, or any other details, I'm not exactly sure. The second possible explanation. Lee Harker was seemingly a miraculous child born with second sight, the seventh daughter of the seventh daughter. However, the second sight was because of a demonic entity attached to her, leading her to be fearful of her extremely Catholic family. Longlegs is someone who hears voices in his heads that command him to make dolls, and then once he does, these dolls are possessed by Lamas too. Again, unintentionally bringing them to life, just like Pinocchio, except they're not really alive. One day, Harker is marked by Longlegs to be a victim, but upon realizing something sinister was going on in Harker, he opted instead to let her go since she was just like him, and he moved on to the next family. This explains why Longlegs recognizes her and goes, there she is. At some point, her mom became extremely mentally unstable and killed someone, and now she has become incredibly medicated and cannot function as well as she used to. Although it's equally possible she used to know Longlegs given he ties her up in that one scene. After seeing what her mom has become, Harker decides she wants to save lives instead of taking them and joins the FBI. The FBI decides to take charge of the Long Lakes case and she quickly begins to solve what is going on and connects it with her childhood. However, because of her second sight, she sees her boss is up next in line for Long Lakes crimes and tries to save him and his family. The third possible explanation, Long Lakes is Harker's biological dad. I don't really like this one at all. <laughs> I'm not going to dive into it because I think it's fucking stupid. If this is what happens, I'm going to be upset. The fourth possible explanation. Harker's mom killed Lee's biological parents and used her for ritualistic sacrifices. This would explain why she killed those people, why she acts kind of off, and how this demonic entity became attached to Harker. The fifth possible explanation. Longlegs created Harker's mom, which is why Lee is the daughter of the seventh she. She's the daughter of Lamesh too. We know there is something weird going on with how spaced out she appears to be, and her behavior seems to perfectly resemble that of Carrie Ann Camera, who was a survivor of Longlegs. And that is all of my thoughts about what Longlegs story could really be about. It's possible one of these is very true and the others are super wrong, or it's possible it's a mixture of all of them. But it's also very possible that all of them are completely wrong. All I know for certain is even after researching Mesopotamian demons, revelations, and the Bible, T-Rex songs, a really spooky murder website, and learning multiple ciphers, 
I still do not know what movie I'm about to walk into for sure. Neon has done a beautiful job advertising this film, and I could not be more excited for what actually transpires in it. I hope this video has been beneficial in learning all types of different things, and I hope that when the movie comes out that you can enjoy it for yourself. I'd like to thank my cipher master Juliet for helping me with a lot of the long leg ciphers. I definitely could not do it without her, and she was a big help in making this video happen. And I would like to thank my patrons Juliet, Joshua, Ray, and Jim. You guys are the MVPs, and literally I don't know what I would do without you. What if instead of long legs, it was long dick, and every time long legs came on screen, he just said long dick style.